and finally our new home is completed and we are moving in a week. In the midst of all this, my husband started making a surprising statement. Mom said that they're almost done packing. What are your parents moving into? Huh? What are you talking about? Of course they are. We're moving into the new house. Wait, which new house? Did your parents buy a house too? Are you out of your mind? The new house I'm talking about is the one we're buying. What? What do you mean? My name is Mary, a 34-year-old office worker. I've always been a workaholic and always prioritize work over my love life. As a result, I was able to get promoted early on and often given various responsibilities and important tasks. I work for a pharmaceutical company and my main job involves visiting healthcare professionals like doctors to provide, collect, and convey information about the quality, efficacy, and safety of drugs. Every day, I go to different hospitals, and when I return to the office, I'm really busy putting together materials and preparing presentations on new drugs for doctors. I'm such a workaholic that my parents often say, if you don't find someone good, you might as well go on blind dates. And each time I refuse, saying I don't have time for that. Seriously, going on blind dates one after another? I don't want to do something so immoral. However, I've started to wonder, is it really okay to stay single for the rest of my life? My friends are getting married one after another, and a close friend who used to say, let's travel a lot as carefree single buddies forever, is now a mother of two. I still believe that marriage isn't everything in life, but I wonder if it's okay for my life to end without experiencing it. The truth is, I'm starting to feel anxious about it. It was during those times that I met Yuji, who would later become my husband. A friend who heard about me rushing to get married arranged a blind date where I first met Yuji. Yuji is 29, five years younger than me, and works as a web designer. He also prioritizes work, which has often led to unsuccessful relationships just like me. I thought and felt a strange kinship with him. We hit it off right away and started dating. He understood that work is my priority, so we only met when our schedules aligned, making the relationship very manageable. He also seemed very dedicated to his work and serious, making me think he might be a good fit for me to marry. His parents also suggested that it might be time for him to consider marriage, and they even thought about having an arranged marriage. I felt that his situation was similar to mine, which made me think even more strongly that he might be the right person to marry. And after about a year of dating, we got married. My parents were overjoyed about my marriage, and my mother was so happy she was in tears. She cried during the engagement announcement and during the wedding, so I think she was truly happy. Thus began my married life with my husband. But we immediately hit a wall. The reason was my in-laws. Since our house was only about a 10-minute walk from my in-laws' house, we were often summoned there. It was always my mother-in-law who calls us over, seemingly trying to pick on me while meeting my husband. My mother-in-law often made sarcastic comments to me without my husband or father-in-law knowing and makes me do household chores for no apparent reasons. Mary, my back is hurting a bit. Could you do the cleaning for me? Oh, uh, sure. Then please clean all the rooms and hallways on both the first and second floors. What? And then there's my sister-in-law, another source of headache. She's rude by nature and badmouths me regardless of whether my husband or father-in-law is around. Mary seems like such a plain and boring woman, doesn't she? Thankfully, both my husband and father-in-law scold her, but she doesn't care and does as she pleases. I want something sweet, Mary. Can you go get me some? Oh, perfect timing. While you're at it, please pick up some groceries for dinner, too. Although I wondered why I had to do it, I initially thought it was better not to go against my in-laws, so I quietly complied. However, this only encouraged my mother-in-law and sister-in-law to take advantage. They started harassing me at every opportunity. 
Since then, I completely hated going to my in-laws and began to tell my husband I don't want to go. My husband said, Well, I won't force you to come, but he also expressed his displeasure, saying, They're my family, so try to get along with them. If my mother-in-law and sister-in-law were kinder, I could have gotten along with them. Since my husband didn't force me, I managed to avoid visiting my in-laws for a while. But on occasions like New Year's or other holidays, I couldn't refuse and had to go. Yet every time I visited my in-laws, my mother-in-law and sister-in-law treated me like a plaything. I only have to endure this once or twice a year. I would tell myself as a way to get through it. My married life with my husband would have been close to ideal if it weren't for the issues with my in-laws. He knows I love my job, so he lets me work overtime when needed and helps share the household chores. I'm truly grateful for his understanding of my work. Also, my husband has always supported my dream, that is, to build my own home, a dream I've had since I was a child. Although my husband supports me, I've decided to build the house with my own savings, so there's no financial assistance from him. So, I guess it is more like an understanding rather than supporting me. I had almost all the money saved up for my dream house since my student days for my part-time job earnings. I don't want to be too open about it, but I think one of the reasons I was able to have enough money at my age was that I was able to save a reasonable amount each month because my company paid me quite well. And finally, when I had saved enough for my home, I immediately hired a construction company. I had done a lot of research on floor plans and designs in the past, so I was able to smoothly convey my ideas. I was thinking this could be Yuji's workspace, considering he often works from home as a web designer. I thought a room with good sunlight and a nice view would be perfect. That's really nice. I'm so happy. Thank you. The new home is quite far from my in-laws, so I doubt my mother-in-law and sister-in-law would visit often. I waited excitedly for the house to be completed, and finally, our home was completed, and we decided to move in a week. Then my husband made a surprising statement. Mom said that they're almost done packing. What are your parents moving to? Huh? What are you talking about? Of course they are. We're moving into the new house. Wait, which new house? Did your parents buy a house too? Are you out of your mind? The new house I'm talking about is the one we're buying. What? What do you mean? Why are your parents moving into my house? Why? Well, when I mentioned the new house, they said they wanted to live with us. What? How can you decide on something like that on your own? I can't believe this. What the hell? You hate me that much. Of course, it's bad. My dream was to build and live in my ideal home. So why do I have to be bothered by your parents? Bother? They're my family. I don't know if you haven't noticed, but your mother and sister have been harassing me, so living together is impossible. Despite everything I said, my husband was far from being convinced and said something unbelievable. Enough already. Stop being so selfish. What? Mom said it. She said you were the one with the attitude and they were troubled. All they want is a decent daughter-in-law. You actually believe that? Enough? You really don't listen to you. You're too old to act like a child anyway. My parents are moving in with us. If you oppose, well, then it's divorce. What? Yeah, let's do that. I'm serious. I'm going to my parents' house today so you stay here and cool off and reflect on what you told me. Saying that my husband went to his parents' house. My affection for my husband went down the drain. After all, he's his mother's child. Their selfish nature must be the same at the core. The next day, my husband returned home with a smirk. Did you reflect on your actions? Who's reflecting on what? Are you sure you should be saying that? Here's the divorce papers. I've already filled out my part. I told you I'm serious. If you don't reflect, we're getting a divorce. Wonder if you can remarry at your age. So stop being stubborn and just listen to me. My mom and sister said that they would forgive you. 
Okay, good girl. Now don't ever go against me again, got it? Seriously, how could I have not seen my husband's true nature until now? Perhaps getting a valuable asset like the new house brought out his true nature. It seems my husband becomes arrogant when he feels like he won. If that's the case, it's good to know before living together in my new house. I immediately filed the divorce papers. Now that we're no longer married, I'm under no obligation to let his family into my house. Luckily, my husband stayed at his parents' house for a few days to supposedly make me reflect, so I was able to move all my stuff to the new house first. The new house is just as I envisioned. Every corner of it makes me feel excited. Just being in this space filled me with an increasing sense of happiness. And then my ex-husband came to visit the house. Looking at the intercom video, it seemed he brought his parents and sister along. Oh, I forgot to mention that I filed for divorce. When I answered the intercom, my ex-husband, irritated, said, Open up quickly. Sorry, sorry. I don't think that's possible. What? Are you kidding me? Let us in quickly. Seriously, what's the meaning of moving out alone like this? Sorry, I forgot to tell you. I filed for divorce. What? What do you mean? Meaning, I submitted the divorce papers you handed me. We're no longer married, so I can't let you into this house. But hey, Yuji, what's this about a divorce? Didn't you two talk it out and agree that we'll all live together? Even if you divorced, the house is marital property, right? Why does she get to occupy it? Exactly. Our son has the right to live here. To you, Yuji? Didn't you explain? Aya, ah, well, anyway, that's the situation. So could you please leave now? Don't be ridiculous. Why should I take orders from you? If you stay any longer, I'll call the police. The police? The mention of the police completely frightened his family. Then his father said, Sorry, Mary, we'll leave now. Please don't call the police. And his family got in their car and left. As for my ex-husband and his family, they apparently met a miserable fate. My former father-in-law confronted my ex-husband and learned about the harassment I got from my mother-in-law and sister-in-law. Disgusted, he divorced my former mother-in-law and cut ties with both my ex-husband and his daughter. Apparently, they had already put their house on the market, mistakenly believing they could move into my new house. As a result, my ex-mother-in-law and ex-sister-in-law, abandoned by their father, had no choice but to rely on my ex-husband, who now supports them. I hope they enjoy their life of mutual blame and poverty. Serves them right. Meanwhile, I'm living comfortably in my new house, often inviting my parents and friends over for good times. I do think about dating again, but now that I have my own house, I'll be careful to choose wisely and avoid the wrong people.